Hello again. Here's another film which I'm making for Room for Art. It's another using my black drawing ink, black Indian ink in this case, and my dip pen, as owned by my grandfather, and possibly this very pen was used by him to make some of his um, airfield sketches from various places around the world during Second World War when he was in the RAF. And I shall also be using a few brushes to apply the ink. I love this technique. I love to create a whole painting, a whole sketch using just using drawing ink. And you can see from this one a coastal scene up near to Montrose, just a little bit south of Montrose in Scotland. This hole in this piece of cliff. Um, you can see from this detailed line drawing all over, but also very fast, big, bold paintbrush marks. And you see all these different shades, different levels of dark. That's all the same ink. The ink is at its blackest, its richest, when it's been drawn on using the pen. And then the more water that you add into it, you can get it from real dark to still really dark. A bit less dark, a bit less dark, a bit less dark, lots less dark. So it's great to construct a whole painting, a whole sketch, just using ink. A few examples, a few more examples to show you. Um, I wanted to show this one because, as you can see, this is not ink, this is watercolour. But this particular scene, this was on the Isle of May. Where I go painting, sketching every year. Um, I was looking out of this sea cave and I painted it first in watercolour and then I painted the same scene, sketched the same scene, using the black ink. Really nice to try working on the same scene in more than one artwork, using different techniques and then comparing and seeing which you prefer. And again you can see the really dark lines and the really light paint brushing and everything in between. A figure, rather rare for me, one of the carvings on the fountain in Lonlithgow Palace, and I've tried here to be really dark and bold in the outlining of the figure, but also have nice bleeding out of the ink, using a technique that's often used in watercolour. In fact, quite a nice Oh yeah, very nice watercolour sky really. Drama. Two more to show. Distant building. Trees. Passing magpie, other magpie down here. I'll just bring this closer so you can see my scratchy scribbly branches. Last one, a bigger one. This is about the largest size that I work on when I'm working outdoors, basically because this is about the largest size I can fit in my rucksack. This is an old burial ground further north in Scotland. Some boulders on top. And painted on a really nice textured watercolour paint watercolour paper. Okay. So I decided to do a pencil drawing before getting started and I'm going to paint using the ink on top of this. As you'll know I very often don't draw first but on this occasion I have decided to. This is my water. Yes it's very black with ink but as I'm using more ink now I decided not to refresh the water. If you haven't watched my other ink video, this uh, 
is my really handy little bottle with this pipette which I can use to draw with and to squeeze out big blobs of ink with. I find it a very handy tool to take out with me. And my grandpa's pen. Okay, so I'm going to start off, because I want to show you a particular technique, I'm going to start off by... Oh, I haven't picked up enough ink here. I'm going to start off with drawing over some or a lot of the pencil lines. I'm then going to let them dry and then that means I'll be able to put ink washes on top using my brush and ink and water. And you will see that these ink marks which I'm putting on just now do not run. So yes, once an ink mark has been made, if you're using waterproof ink as I am, the mark is there forever. Nice field lines. Uh, if you press too hard, the split-ended nib, the two ends split apart. And if you press too, too hard, oh, and you get a sort of double, double line showing up. And if you press too, too hard, your nib will actually snap. It can be quite scratchy, as I think you're able to see drawing with these pens. And that encourages one to load more ink onto it, dip it further into your ink pot. And then that encourages the pen to drop a big blob of its ink onto your artwork, like that. Oh, like that. Okay, so now that I've done that, I have to decide, am I happy to just let that dry and have a huge big black mark there? Well, it's going to be pretty hard to not have a black mark there. But if you do want to try to remove it or some of it, just get yourself a tissue, paper napkin, and stick it on top. In fact, I better show you. If you tear a corner and stick this into the blob, you will see that it soaks up into the napkin. And you might need to do this quite a few times to get rid of as much ink as you can. The reason that I wouldn't just get the napkin and press it straight on there is because there's a very good chance that with that much ink, it would splodge the ink out even more. You don't have to do this. You could decide that you're going to make use of that splodged on ink. So I've still left quite a bit there and I am now going to try making use of it. Waste not, want not. Now for these foreground trees I want to be bolder. I'm not going to use the pen anymore. I am going to use this pipette to draw with it instead. In general, this applies to all paintings, if you can have, this is in general, have thicker brush marks, thicker bolder marks at the front of your painting in the foreground And it can really help that foreground to jump forwards towards you, to give more depth to your image.
Now, the stuff up here is probably getting fairly dry by now. So I'll have a look at working up there next. One thing to try to keep this a fairly simple artwork, fairly simple image. I'm just going to try zooming in for you. Mm, yeah, it's maybe not so good with... Perhaps not so good with this being a portrait format image. Anyway. Okay, so I'm going to think about the sky. And I'm going to use a wider, wider brush, this one here. Now look what I'm doing here. I'm dipping the brush into my water. Oh, you can't see that. Dipping the brush into my already very inky water. And I'm going to paint some of this onto the sky. If I let that dry, it would show up as being very slightly darker than the actual paper colour. But I'm going to have a slightly darker sky even than that. So I've done that. Now I've noticed I've got lots of dark ink just here. This is still very wet, this ink. So I can make use of that by picking it up on the brush. Watch that. And pulling it up into the sky. And because I've already put all that water up there, it's really spreading out through it and doing lovely, lovely things. Ah, oh, I love watching. <laughs> watching paint and ink do this sort of thing. So far I haven't put any water onto those trees, but I'm deciding that I am going to. I'm going to let the ink spread down over them. This is going to be a sort of misty atmospheric scene. And you can see the ink lines which I drew earlier on. They are not being um, absorbed into the water at all. They're they're there, so they will show through. They are showing through. So now I'm very much painting with the ink, and it sure is nice. It doesn't just have to be black ink. You can get all sorts of colours of ink. The other main one that I use is sepia, um, but you can get all sorts of colours. These really nice old boxes. I don't know if you saw that sepia there. Sepia. Um... Ultramarine blue ink. I've had these for years, in fact. No, I don't think they're dried up. Vermilion. Got silver here. Okay, back to the scene. It's amazing how quickly black ink lets you get a really dramatic artwork. You could do this with black watercolour rather than black ink, but I do not feel that you get anywhere near the same richness and same intensity. So I'd recommend the black ink. And you can hopefully see I'm not worrying too much at all about going over lines and being perfect. This is not to be a perfect, precise artwork. Right, now, down here, I can see that a lot of this ink is still pretty wet. If I paint on top of that now, it's really, really going to run. And I'm a bit worried that I'll lose some of the detailed lines, which I would like to stay there. You can see here I'm dabbing away some of the ink, but already it's been absorbed by the paper enough that I cannot get rid of that if I wanted to. Wouldn't be possible.
Oh, I, I, I love this technique. <laughs> okay, I'm just going, just going to go for it down here. No, I want my larger brush actually. It's probably going to get quite dark down here. And yes, this is going to obscure some of the drawing I've already done down here. Not much more to do now. So just an only... Mm, just over 15 minutes. You can get such a lovely bold, bold piece. You can also, if you fancy it, do flicking. This won't show up very well, probably. And don't forget, if you like, to sign it. You might want to do this with a, <laughs> a drawing pen to avoid the risk of it spilling a big blob. Scratchy. There we go. What a signature. Even I can barely tell what it says. Now, don't forget to clean out your um, brushes very well and also your dip pen very well. And with the brushes, I would recommend. First of all, you rinse. Well, first of all, actually, use a paper towel before you've put them in the water. Use a paper towel to get off as much ink as possible. Same when you're painting to get off as much paint as possible. Then put it in your water, cleaner water than this. Get off as much paint of the extra paint as you can. Then do this again with a paper towel. Then I'd probably move to some cleaner water same thing again and last thing I'm going to do is go downstairs and use some soap put a bit of soap in my hand and go round and round like that with your paintbrush working up a lather and then rinse the soap off the paintbrush using cold water not hot water apparently that's what I've read so I do it all right Lovely dramatic ink. Look at that running at the top up there. You can have great fun letting it run along. Okay, thank you again.